that most of you are going to notice it is much colder outside. <laughs> That's an understatement. Some people are actually waking up to some of this stuff. Snow here in Albuquerque, though, we're dealing with some wind, the cold, and it is damp on top of that. So we sent our Samantha McDonald downtown in Albuquerque to have more Sam. Looks like it is still pretty darn windy out there. It is very windy, Matt. You can definitely feel a chill in the air this morning. I hope you did not pack away those coats. Drivers will also notice around town some areas are a little damp. The spring storm is making for some difficult road conditions, mostly up north. If you check the NMRoads.com website from the State Highway Department, it shows there are difficult driving conditions on New Mexico Highways 38 and 434, in and around the Taos area, and U.S. Highway 64. Some viewers have let us know what it looks like where they are with pictures. Take a look. Ron Schwartz sent us these from his cabin in Brazos Canyon, south of Chama. And Donald Reed sent us some photos of the snow falling between Angel Fire and Eagle's Nest, which had two inches by mid-afternoon yesterday. We did get some rain overnight in the metro area, and that's leading to a very cold morning. Back to you. All right, thank you for the update, Stam. Say, Sam, stay warm out there. Of course, New Mexico is the only part, of, uh, not the only part of the country being hit with some weird, unseasonable weather this morning. We got uh, 36 and a half inches over the weekend. Oh, that is a lot. This is north of us in Kremlin, Colorado, about 100 miles northwest of Denver. It was supposed to be a summer pasture. Dry last week, but take a look. Now covered under three feet of snow in the middle of May. Well, then next door in Texas, heavy, heavy rain caused a lot of street flooding in and around Waco and San Antonio. It stranded a lot of drivers, as you can see it, even for some people to have to be rescued. Get ready, get ready, violent tornado, violent tornado. Wow, that's chilling. Now there's a state of emergency in Nebraska. This after Sunday's powerful storm spawned several tornadoes in the southeastern part of that state. A number of folks there are still waking up without power this morning and way down south at the South Pole. Actually, a section of a glacier is melting faster than expected enough to eventually raise the global sea levels by four feet when these things melt completely, which is expected to take several centuries. But NASA and University of California research team are doing the study says its conclusion is it is too late for us to do anything about this. Elizabeth. Something else a lot of folks are talking about this morning. Some hot air balloon pilots are worried the federal government is about to make a major change in how they police the sport. And they're worried that it could affect the Fiesta. The National Transportation Safety Board is considering requiring more oversight on pilots giving passenger rides. In response to many crashes, the NTSB wants new regulations over training, inspections, and licensing. And some pilots think that the feds could knock casual ballooners out of the sport, harming the Fiesta with fewer pilots giving fewer rides. The balloon Fiesta, people fly sponsors. So is that all of a sudden considered a ride? Therefore, yes, it's going to absolutely affect events across the country. The NTSB is asking the FAA to make the final decision within the next couple of months. We'll stay on top of it for you. It's slow and it's painstaking, but investigators are gradually getting a better idea of what happened in the deep, dark caverns at the whip site. Over the weekend, a camera on an extender reached the back of the storage area where radiation had leaked in February. Photos show melted plastic and rubber on the tops of waste containers and drums. Experts are analyzing all of this and plan to get more pictures from another angle. Nobody knows when the waste isolation pilot plant will be safe to reopen. Well, the anti-APD protesters who got kicked out of a city council meeting last week are now planning to sue. They signed up to speak. They went up to the microphone, then said nothing. Security escorted four of the protesters out of the meeting and banned them from City Hall for 90 days. Those protesters say the new rules the council created after the chaotic meeting on May 5th unfairly limit free speech. The four who were removed are now meeting with the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, about filing a lawsuit. At 6.06, here we go again. Another story of the state of New Mexico spending thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of your money on stuff that's been sitting around and collecting dust for years. In 2010, the Department of Transportation paid nearly 118,000 bucks for nearly 1,400 new internet based phones here. They were installed in five offices all around the state, but not in Santa Fe. 
On special assignment last night, we found out 850 have been sitting in storage for four years. What's taking so long? Um, just really the, the complication of, of transferring all of the equipment um, to do it. We just haven't gotten there yet. You know, phones um, don't go bad. So when will these phones be installed? Will they at all be installed? To see that part of the story and get a reaction from a state legislator about this big purchase, join us at 9 o'clock on Two Casa tonight or click on KRQE.com anytime. Mayor R.J. Berry's idea for a river walk along Albuquerque's Bosque could be in jeopardy if one city councilor gets her way. ABQ, the plan, has been the focus of the mayor's office for several years now. And one of the ideas is to create an area along the Rio Grande with more activities and amenities, including restaurants. The city council set aside funding for the project two and a half years ago. But after an audit showed 59% of Albuquerque's parks need maintenance, Councillor Diane Gibson wants to use that money instead to fix the parks. We do have 291 parks in Albuquerque, and many of those parks have gone without substantial um, improvements for many, many years. The mayor's office disagrees, saying better management can take care of the maintenance problems. Gibson's resolution was discussed at last night's finance committee meeting. It still needs to make it to the full council for further consideration. I'm sure you don't want to hear this, but it's a good heads up. You can expect more delays around the Paseo I-25 project during the day and at night all this week. The major ones include both north and southbound the frontage roads, which are now reduced to single lanes from Paseo to San Antonio. Jefferson is also down to one lane in each direction, just north of Paseo. This all goes from 9 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon, then again from 9 at night until 5 in the morning. For more information on the project, get an update on it. Go to KRQE.com and click on links. At least they're trying to avoid rush hour with some of those mm -hmm. lane closures. It's called growing pains. What are you going to do?